It is the 12th of June 2022. Thank you so much for watching UBC TV Inspiring Uganda. My name is Sharon Chomdisha and welcome to UBC News Tonight. Welcome aboard. We'll take a look at our top stories of the day. In UBC News Tonight, livestock wrestlers allegedly collaborating with security to sell livestock. Still to come, President Museveni gifts Wobusobuzi Ruhanga Bisaka Aka on his 93rd birthday. And in more stories, Kisoro vaccinates its population by over 60%. Nabumali High School celebrates 110 years, students cancelled on discipline. A very good evening once again, and you're watching UBC News tonight. Now, my name is Sharon Chomdisha. We start off with President Museveni, who has spent his fifth day in pursuit of peace in eastern and northern region, following the emergency of cattle rustling in the region. During the security briefing, ahead of the meeting with the Choli and Langwe leaders, President Museveni was informed that the cattle rustling had turned commercial, with rustlers collaborating with other actors, including security operatives. The issue of cattle thefts, especially in a Choli subregion, is also on the rise. And according to reports, the police canine unit has been vital in fighting the vice, but is limited. President Yoweri Museveni has now announced various stringent measures designed to end cattle rust, installing more CCTV cameras at checkpoints, including at Karuma. Para and Masin Port Ferry to monitor cows being moved from the north to the south and in the region and use of digital markings of all vehicles. That will be centrally monitored. So, like if you wanted to monitor cows mo moving between north and, and southern Uganda, you can actually do it. Do it. Not only depending on the roadblocks of those corrupt people who can be compromised. I can put the cameras and even myself in the state house, watch them myself. So we are going to put cameras. We want every vehicle to have a digital marker, electronically monitored centrally. This pr program is going to be rolled out. President Museveni, who has been on a fact-finding mission and assessment of the security situation in the districts bordering Karamoja sub-region affected by the cattle rustling, was yesterday meeting leaders of Lango and Acholi sub-regions at Baralege State Lodge in Otuke County, Otuke District. Those in attendance included the Vice President, retired Major Jessica Alupo, and the Secretary General of the NRM, Honorable Richard Todd Wong. Others were cabinet ministers from the two regions of Lango and Acholi, members of parliament, RDCs and RCCs, and religious leaders among others. Now, once we have got the digital markers of all vehicles, we shall be able to see which vehicles were in, were in Nyakwai at this time of, 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 at this time of, 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 of day and night when there was a raid there. So, so really, I can assure you, by combining both ancient and modern means, we are going to end this cattle rusty. President Museveni said the measures will allow soldiers who are in operations to apprehend wrong characters found in possession of firearms, bows and arrows, sticks for driving the animals, all those suspected to be involved in cattle rustling. He said the use of police canines would also be intensified. President Museveni urged Ugandans to cultivate a culture of peace for economic transformation. After we defeated Koi, we launched a massive disarmament in Karamoja. People thought it would not succeed because they said the Karamajong had the culture of guns and so on. But for us, we said no, it would succeed. And they tried to fight, to fight the army, but they couldn't. We, we removed many guns, 40,000, and the area became peaceful. 
President Museveni, who welcomed the leaders to his home in Baralege and told them the history of his occupation of the area, also used the same occasion to mobilize leaders to sensitize their people on how to eradicate poverty through modern cultivated commercial agriculture. He said leaders must use the vast experience they have of what is happening around the world to wake up their people to abandon subsistence agriculture in favor of modern commercial and cultivated farming. The president stressed the need to guide the Wanainchi on proper enterprise selection in relation to land holding per family, strongly recommending intensive agriculture for those with four acres of land. Museveni said the families with huge chunks of land can go in for extensive farming, especially for crops like cotton, maize and sugarcane, among others. The president at this juncture invited leaders from the region to visit his demonstration farms at Baralege and convey the message from the farm to the people in their areas that will help them get out of poverty. Commenting on the concerns raised by the leaders of the two sub-regions of Lango and Acholi, President Museven noted that all social economic requests by leaders require funds, adding that with proper budgeting in parliament and prioritization of programs, all those needs would gradually be met including infrastructure development, power extension, hospital expansion, school enrollment, among others, as not all of them can be fulfilled at once. On the issue of Akibwa Stadium, President Museveni pledged the prioritization of Akibwa and Mohinga National Stadiums to promote sports. On the issue of the upper land conflict, President Museveni urged leaders not to be misleaders. The Vice President, retired Major Jessica Alupo, once again thanked President Museveni for peace and security prevailing in the country. That has enabled Wanainchi to carry out their duties normally. Still about President Museveni, he has congratulated and donated a brand new land cruiser and 20 million Ugandan shillings to Faith of Unity founder Owobso Wazibisaka. This was during celebrations to mark the Owobso 93rd birthday at Kapiemi, Muhoro Town, Kanzo, Kagadi District, where Premier Nabanja represented the President. The founder of Faith of Unity, Owobso Mukama Ruhanga Bisaka's legacy, continues to be celebrated. The latest has been at his 93rd birthday, whose commemoration was officiated by Premier Robin Anabanja at Kapiemi Muhoro Town Council, Kagadi District. Glamour, pomp and excitement was apparent when the celebrants learned of President Yoweri Museveni's gift of a brand new Land Cruiser V8 vehicle. <laughs> President Museveni hailed Obuso Ruhanga Bisaka for instilling hard work, fostering unity and diversity, and boosting development and reducing poverty in Greater Kibari. The President's message also advised the leaders of faith of unity to encourage believers and the nation to embrace the parish development model. <laughs> Premier Nabanja warned against land wrangles and discouraged claimants of wetlands, which is a prelude to environmental degradation. The leader of Unity of Faith gifted the present Yori Museveni with a chair as a symbol for good leadership and promote of peace and development. Local area leaders request government to address key issues in Bunyoro sub-region, especially the land question, and the road network, especially in Mohororo and in Daiga.
They also want a President Yoweri Museveni to declare 11th June a national holiday to celebrate the birth of Obu Sobozi Omu Kamaruhanga Bisaka. Obu Sobozi Bisaka was born on 11th June 1930 in Kitoma, Kiboizi, Kibale district and started Faith of Unity in 1980. As COVID-19 continues to claim lives in Uganda and the world at large, we have taken a step to see how border districts have maneuvered through the pandemic. Emphasis has been put on Kisoro district being a refugee hosting district. According to research, over 60% of the population has been vaccinated since the onset in 2021. Over 6.3 million people across the world have succumbed to COVID-19 since its outbreak in December 2019 in China while over 539 million people are still battling with the disease worldwide. In March 2021, Uganda joined the rest of the world in the campaign against COVID-19. I'm working with my people to develop our own vaccine. Don't think that we are just sitting here waiting to be rescued by others. We, we were a bit late, but we have started now. My people will be ready to try on the mice. In border districts like Kisoro, the campaign against COVID-19 has been hard due to continued influx of refugees and others due to trouble across the porous borders. Despite vaccination efforts now at 63 percent, Kisoro district campaign against COVID-19 will have to continue because of these refugees and those that cross the border for work, business and food. First, control them not to enter the communities. Then second, we collect them to the camp, to the transit camp, where we organize the vaccination teams. We vaccinate them before they are transferred into the other uh, refugee settlements. Kisara district is a populous area bordered by DRC to the west, Randa to the west, and Kanongo to the north considering that it is the region's food basket of the area and linked by road to both DRC and Rwanda. It continues being a boiling pot for frequent visits by neighbors for trade, tourism and entertainment. Though this might be good for the area's economy, it brings with it possible spread of COVID-19. Those who are resistant to go and be vaccinated are the younger people, the youngsters. He say that uh, the vaccine has some toxins which would destroy their future. But I would say with the current Moderna vaccine, the current, the current Moderna vaccine we have, that's where we have received most complaints. But many people who are getting it, they are, they are the ones who are getting issues, especially of simulation of the disease. Area leaders were duty-bound to carry out intensive sensitization about the importance of getting vaccinated and maintaining the standard operating procedures, which is done to date. This was meant to ensure that residents of Kisoro, also known as the Bafumbira, to embrace vaccination. Vaccine protects from severe disease and death. And the more people get vaccinated, then the greater the opportunity for all of us to get protected, but also to ensure that we don't have our hospitals congested with very sick people. At one time, I had it on UBC, uh, where the legislature gave out to the directive that whoever will be caught when he or she has not been vaccinated would be penalized. Dr. Bagani Zimaiko is the medical superintendent of Kisoro Hospital. He explains the nature of operations after the district had registered the first COVID-19 case at the hospital. I was standing there alone, so asymptomatic, but everybody was at play. People were putting on the eh, phone spraying everywhere. And, you know, it was quite a show. Even the simple things like masks, gloves, it was quite challenging to access them. And, it caused a lot of initial fear in the staffs. At one point, we had every single patient without COVID on one ward, 
and the rest of the hospital was COVID, apart from maternity. Baganizi is ever thankful to government and other partners like UNICEF for the necessary support. The transition uh, district, so it is always there in focus uh, for UNICEF. But secondly also, it is um, prone to climatic issues. I think, uh, just I think in February, we had the challenge of the landslides that happened in one of the villages here. And so we are continuously watching uh, Kisoro in that perspective. So Kisoro is in focus for UNICEF and we we'll continue to, uh, to, to, to support Kisoro. Baganiz says after registering vaccination of at least 60% of the population, there was some relief that necessary precautions had been undertaken and all that remained was for the population to observe the special operating procedures. However, now there are plenty. We started off with few vaccines and people were rushing here. It was like a market. Now we have many vaccines and we are looking for the what? For the... <laughs> For the people and convincing them to come to take uptake. Mm -hmm. So that's that's what that's Efforts to control the spread of COVID-19 is nationwide, with vaccination being undertaken at all hospitals across the country, supported by sustained supply of vaccines. Uganda has so far registered over 160,000 positive cases, of which over 3,600 have succumbed to COVID-19. Mary Namkose, GBC News. Well, remember to always make decisions and choices that enable you to live a better life. Moving on from that, the Uganda Police Canine Unit has organized the sensitization drive to educate Ugandans on dogs and their behaviors. The sensitization has started with a dog walk from Mackenzie Vale Drive, Kololo, to Kamocha. Details follow from Kai. All Ugandans love dogs to embrace uh, proper training of the dogs. They should also consult police in the case they, do, they want to know more about. Many Ugandans regard dogs as being unfriendly and sometimes could cause harm, thus distancing themselves from them. This has prompted Uganda Police Canine Unit to educate Ugandans about dogs and have started with a dog walk on dogs the streets to detect of Kampala. Explosives. We train dogs to detect drugs like narcotics. We also train dogs to follow criminals. They are called tracking dogs. We have dogs that are used to search and rescue in the case someone is missing, maybe in the forest. Oh, they are lost and they don't know where they are. We can take a, a dog to look for that person. We have also trained dogs to detect ivory. Ivory detection dogs are there. We are developing capacities in training cash detection dogs, uh, cadaver dogs. We are also training dogs to go in disaster areas to search for victims who have maybe there is a land, landslide, corrupt building. We are also developing capacities in, in training dogs in arson detection. Sergeant Nangoli urged the public to vaccinate dogs to minimize harm and also know their capabilities. Nangoli says the police canine unit has the capacity to train dogs to solve modern crime and even search and rescue using their dogs. He emphasized good care and proper training of dogs. Sudat Kaye, UBC News. In more news, residents from five villages in Kalangalosa County, Mitiana District are living under fear and suspicion following notifications from a section of individuals claiming to be owners of the land which they have occupied for years. Now this has prompted the area member of parliament, Kibedin Segumire, to intervene. Take a look. This is a land eviction agent meeting convened in Kalangalo Sub County, Michana District. Here, residents from five villages in Kalangalo Sub County risk facing forceful eviction by claimants of the contested land. <laughs>
The meeting was convened by the Michana North Member of Parliament, Kibedi Nsekumire. It is during this engagement that there were some inconsistencies noticed from the land title being fronted by one Leonard Kiseto who claims this land ownership. the meeting, however, resolved to carry out investigations into this matter, especially the documentation process. You find the person with the land title, which land title is not for that particular place. What I've decided, I've told them, I've stopped whatever activities there is taking place so that we can go back to means of land and rectify that problem. An interim halt by the area member of parliament was also issued to deter any development activity on the contested piece of land. <laughs> It should be noted that the Kalangalo Sabu County is a home to the lands minister, Judith Nabakoba. Robert Nyango, UBC News. Thank you, Robert Onyango, for that report. Moving on from that, farmers in Kole District have been equipped with skills of dealing with challenges and opportunities in the modern farming. Now, the training, according to the Trainers Sasakawa Africa Association, a non government organization, the training helps the farmers to increase agriculture production and increase household incomes. Over 100 smallholder farmers from the sub counties of Okwero Dot and Alito in Kole district have been equipped with modern farming technologies aimed at increasing agriculture production and household income. We set different demonstrations looking at different technologies in the line of regenerative agriculture, looking basically on integrated soil fertility management, integrated pest and disease management, weed management, among other aspects of agronomy. So by bringing the farmers, we are helping them to participatory learn and also advise the, the, themselves in their different farmer groups to see which technologies they can take up having seen them work. The training was organized by Sasakawa Africa Association and dubbed Greenfield Day, where farmers receive knowledge on how to manage the crops while in the garden before harvesting. A Greenfield Day is a seasonal event and we do it at uh, a stage when the crops are at a vegetative level that they can show responses to the different technologies. Then after this, towards harvesting, we conduct what we call a brown field day, where we are now focusing on post-harvest technologies, where we should show to the farmers how to harvest, what kind of machineries or equipment are available for harvesting. The farmers were also exposed to the dangers of various fertilizers and pesticides in the market and advised to select wisely, since there are substandard products in the market. We are here for the for three objectives. Number one, we want farmers to have high yields at a low cost because our fertilizers is the most cheapest fertilizer in the country today, if compared to other synthetic fertilizers. And the interest of the matter, we want to make sure farmers will produce products that can be sold both nationally and internationally. 
in the market. For that case, you find that if we can remember, last year, some of our maize was rejected by our neighbor Kenya just because of the toxic substances in the maize. But you cannot find on record where they say they poured it either in Lake Victoria or where. The farmers and the district leaders commended Sasakawa Africa Association for an initiative and appealed for continuous extension services for better agriculture production. By the time Sasakawa came, we were not all that doing this, this, this seed. But when they come, we, use, we start using uh, improved seeds. They taught us with agronomy, how to plant, how to prepare garden. My group, they are feeling okay because we have improved even, we have changed the seed. We have been using local seed, but now we are using improved seed. We have learned about planting. Are we together? Yes. Philip Aguta, UBC News, in Kole. Thank you so much, Philip Aguta. Now, the presidential advisor on defense, General Salim Saleh, has encouraged veterans and families of the deceased to remain calm as the NRM government remains committed to compensate them. General Salim Saleh made the remarks during the commemoration of the Heroes Day for Nakaseke District at Kapeka Primary School. <laughs> National Resistant Movement Government is committed to supporting all veterans, especially those that participated in the five-year rebellion war in the early 1980s. The Presidential Advisor on Security and National Coordination of Operation Wealth Creation, General Salim Saleh, commended the war veterans for being calm and encouraged them to embrace government programs. General Saleh was officiating Eros Day festivities in Nakaske district held in Kapeka Primary School. Affairs has now undertaken to verify all the lists and to give the numbers to the correct people. For now I know all of them. The, the issues are very, very small compared to the capacity that we have now. Because there are only 400 with the numbers but who are having pension problems. Then there is one, two, about 200 who don't have numbers, who we are going to handle. There are like 600 people. So 600 people for our situation now, it's very easy. The event was also characterized by groundbreaking ceremony for the construction of a school building and commissioning of a two-classroom block by Kabeka Industrial Park what 70 million. The state minister for Kampala, Chavatugavi Kabuye, commended the heroes participated in the five-year Ngolira Push War for bringing socio-economic and political transformation of the country. Kabuye disclosed that the Ministry of Ruguero Triangle has unmarked 294 million shillings to reconstruct Kapeka Primary School. <laughs> The function was also attended by the Minister of State for Defense and Veterans Affairs, Huda Olelu, and the Nakaske District Woman MP, Sara Najuma, among others. UBC News. <laughs> In more news tonight, Brenda Tibamwenda, board member, presidential CEO forum, has expressed the need of value addition to agricultural products to increase a market access. Now, Brenda Tibamwenda made the remarks while interacting with members of Zilowe Agali Awamu Agribusiness Training Association in Luweri District. We Agariawamu Agribusiness Training Association in Luwero District started with seven farmer groups that shared their experiences on farming. We do a lot of trainings to the smallholder farmers. We provide them post-service handling uh, equipment to make sure that they dry on tarpaulins. And uh, of recent, we have encouraged them now to harvest and bring direct to the facility because now we, for us we have a dryer that can dry this maize quickly before it develops aflatoxins. It grew from a sub-county to a district now sensitizing farmers on agriculture, focusing on agribusiness training, grain production and processing. We incorporated the horticulture because uh, we wanted to cater for interest of the youth, because for horticulture it is easy to 
harvest in a short time. And for the youth, they need money now. So we see that it is a venture that is incorporated youth because for them they need money quickly to have in the pocket to solve their immediate problems as they think of investing in other things or long-term things. This has prompted members from the Presidential CEO Forum to visit the association to get tips of scaling up value addition in agricultural products. I think the beauty now also is that uh, the Directorate of Industrial Training. So I think the quickest way would be to, to see how Zapta could partner with uh, DIT to see at what levels these youths could be certified. And uh, maybe Zapta would go a long way in uh, liaising with DIT, what are the requirements, what is really needed. They could even actually be given a center of certification under DIT. Brenda Tibamwenda asked government to empower Zero Wiagali Awamu Agribusiness Training Association to equip youth with soft skills. We need to motivate this youth to do something instead of crying, we don't have money. No, we seven has brought money up to, 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 to the palace, money is there. So that is my appeal to the youth. Members of the Presidential CEO Forum interacted with Zero Owe, Agali Awamu Agribusiness Training Association members on how they can address bottlenecks in the private sector. Sudat Kaye, UBC News. UBC News tonight will take a short commercial break and we'll be back with more news. Entertainment for as little as 13,000 Uganda shillings per month. Go TV. Great stories. Zidiwano. Go TV Uganda. Love it. The Kabaka Birthday Run 2022 is back. On Sunday, 3rd July 2022 at Lubiri Mengo. This year, the run will be physical and will be flagged off by Sabasa Yakabaka at 7 a.m. Come out in large numbers once again to Lubiri Mengo. Run for a cause to fight and end HIV by 2030. Buy your ticket today at 15,000 Uganda shillings from Airtel Shops at Tobani Center, New Taxi Park, ShopRite Building, Benchwanka Street, Majestic Brands Office at Bulange Mengo. You can also buy your ticket using Airtel Money. Dial star 185 star 5 hash. Select Payments, select Kabaka Run, and follow the prompts to complete the payment. Kabaka Birthday Run 2022 is brought to you by UNAID, CBS, BBS, and Airtel, the smartphone network. Fellow citizens, thank you for diligently and consistently honoring your tax obligations. It is through your collective contribution that the government is able to provide social services. In spite of the simultaneous global crises that have hit our livelihoods and businesses, you have proven that as a people, we can rise up and still mobilize domestic revenues enough to sustain us as a country. As we close in to the end of this financial year, I urge you not to lose the momentum and resilience that you have demonstrated all year through. Please file your returns and remit your taxes in time to avoid unnecessary inconveniences that come with non-compliance. As Uganda Revenue Authority, we are committed to facilitate you in honoring your obligations through a reliable and delightful service. 
I invite you to use our various e-platforms to remit your tax contributions with ease and on time. We have extended all our working hours at all our border stations, the bonded warehouses and service centers. Should you need further assistance, please contact us via our toll-free lines and our WhatsApp platform. Tax is the surest way of liberating our country from the bondage of economic dependence. Let us all play our part, pay our dues, and vote our country. For God and my country. Uganda Revenue Authority. Developing Uganda together. Meet Professor Petero. He knows something every hustler in UG is gonna love. Oh, see. You say I was just trying to uh, get the document to register for air telemanage. You don't need the documents. You just said it for register. Oh, What's going on here? He sells things from the shop, and behind my back, he gets the money and gives it to his Google friends. <laughs> <laughs> but just get out of money pay so that all money comes direct to your business wallet and only you, the owner, have access to it. Just dial star 185 star 10 star 10 hash and now you are on. No waiting. <laughs> huh? This insanity is sweet. Give them also. I only take Airtel Money Pay. It's easy and secure. Yes, become a safer and more efficient cash free business today. Easy. No mixing your business money with your Kameza money. No, that's efficient. Airtel Money. Instant, secure, borderless. <laughs> You're still watching UBC News tonight and it's just 22 minutes to 9 p.m. Moving on and in more news, a High Court Justice uh, Henry Sabi Kawesa has encouraged religious leaders and evangelists to emphasize training to change uh, their mindset while spreading the word of God. Like, yeah! <laughs> A judge of high court has asked pastors to embrace training to gain skills in spreading the word of God. Justice Henry Isabide Kawesa says this respect of the clutch in the Pentecostal churches will come to an end once they embrace training. Serving God and not having enough training, we are encouraging them to come and be trained. Yes, God calls us, God anoints us, God gives us the Holy Spirit. But again, God also has got that. Sometimes he wants to tell you what to do by going to another. He was presiding over the first graduation ceremony of over 30 evangelists after completing the pastoral ministries in church and education of born again faith training center at Victor Church, Namungona. He also encouraged the Ugandanists to write and read books to gain knowledge and skills. The head of the Pentecostal churches in Kampala, Bishop Habbat Buyondo, says through these trainings they will equip and use all the chances of promoting them to avoid fake pastors starting churches as a business. It's for us to be committed, to be focused, to have a point where we are going. Because we have a long way to go. We cannot think about the people that are scratching at our back. This is one thing, that this is one principle you must know. Whoever that is scratching your back is at your back. And whoever is at your back shouldn't be your concern. <laughs> In more news, an estimated 20% of children across the country are subjected to child labor. This has been disclosed during celebrations to mark the World Day Against Child Labor in Kabarode District. Now the minister urged parents to embrace government programs, especially the parish development model, boost their incomes and sustain their families. State Minister for Local Government, Victoria Wasingi Rusoke, represented the Vice President, Bridget Kalahenda reports. <laughs> An estimated 20% of children across the country are subjected to child labor. This has been disclosed during celebrations to mark the World Day Against Child Labor in Kabarole District. Child labor is more prevalent in rural areas, which is at 31%, than urban centers or urban areas, which are at 20%. <laughs> 
abana kuiza kuiza isomero ni baba nza kuzinduka kuno gama irungi ni kibali etereza kereleru the minister urged parents to embrace government programs especially the parish development model to boost their incomes and sustain their families state minister for local government victoria rusoke represented the vice president i'm going to ask the labor officer and the district of education officer to give me the statistics of children who are in school to look around and record the children who are not in school and then we begin a serious war to make sure all the children return to school they stay in school and complete school poverty domestic violence irresponsible parents and effects of covid-19 were highlighted as the current drivers to child labor the recent neglect by some parents and caregivers sometimes the hostility at home but today we call domestic violence is seen as a key driver. State Minister for Gender and Labor in charge of Youth and Children's Affairs, Sarah Mateke, said the ministry is embarking on training, rehabilitating and enrolling dropout children to schools to address the challenge. The ministry established a national steering committee on elimination of child labor at a multi-sectoral coordination platform on matters of child labor. Stepping up labor inspection and enforcement of labor standards. State Minister for Labor, Employment and Industrial Relations, Colonel Patrick Okero Engola, said the Minister of Gender is also implementing a policy to address child labor challenge. The National Action Plan on Elimination of Child Labor and Employment Act 2006 and its attendant regulations to curb child labor world day against child labor is commemorated every 12th june and this year's celebrations was under the theme universal social protection against child labor so that kai kawahenda bridget ubc news <laughs>sector with a struggling business following the COVID pandemic, UDB in partnership with European Union is providing financial assistance to businesses operating in the tourism sector. You can access subsidized loan with grants, loan with a turnover of up to five years, free business advisory services, and free environmental impact assessment. Visit www.udbl.co.ug slash call for applications to apply. Deadline for submission is 31st October 2022 at 5 p.m. For more information, please call 0414-355-509. Get connected today with the MyAirtel 4G smartphone and enjoy free data for one whole year worth 86,500 Uganda shillings. That's free 2GB for the first month and free 1GB for the next 11 months. 250,000 Uganda shillings with free data for one whole year worth 86,500 shillings making the effective price of the 4G phone 163,500 shillings only Airtel, the smartphone network The oil and gas moment brought to you by Petroleum Authority of Uganda creating lasting value in Uganda's oil journey 
The development and commercialization of Uganda's oil and gas resources is being undertaken through four flagship projects, which will bring in investment over 15 billion US dollars into the economy. The Kingfisher project will produce 40,000 barrels of crude oil per day at peak. The Tilenga project will produce 190,000 barrels of crude oil per day at peak. The 1,443-kilometer East African Crude Oil Pipeline project will transport the produced crude oil to access the international market via the Tanga port in Tanzania. The Uganda Refinery Project will process up to 60,000 barrels of oil per day to provide petroleum products to the Ugandan market and its immediate neighbors. Additional exploration work is ongoing in the Kanyotaba and Ngasa areas in the Albertin Graben. For more information, visit www.pau.go.ug. Petroleum Authority of Uganda, creating lasting value in Uganda's oil journey. You're still watching UBC News tonight. In more business stories, government through the office of the Prime Minister reopening and starting new cooperative societies in Tesosa Bridge. Now, the Minister of State for Tesla Affairs, Dr. Clement Ongalo Obote, says that the move is meant to boost the production of the cash crops prioritized under parish development model. Cooperative societies have been proved to possess the magical bullet for rural development. Where cooperatives have been resilient, there is some extent of financial inclusion and grassroots tangible development. However, cooperatives can only thrive in a peaceful and stable environment, otherwise any slight conflict can lead to their collapse. This is what happened in 1980s, when there were civil wars and cooperatives somehow went under. By 1984, when Milton Obote had begun campaigning for elections which were supposed to take place in 85, he was already stressed about what to do with cotton. There was cotton lying in Soroti. Those guys were not paid up to now. That cotton just disappeared. Now, there was no market for cotton anymore. Government has now embarked on reopening and building of new cooperative societies in Teso sub-region, aimed at improving the production of cash crops under the parish development model. It has come at this particular point. Now, what we need to focus on, a again to a Paris development model. What we need to focus on is what is it that we can grow, which can be processed for value addition. Farmers now believe that the coming of the new cooperative societies will help them to break through the marketing procedures. How do we reach to the national level? How do we reach to the international level? That's a very big challenge. And the only way is that we have to produce the high quality produce which can beat the market so that, and, and in big volumes. So that when, when, we, when we now advertise, then we're able to get a, an, maybe an outside buyer or within a country, but also a very uh, powerful, what? powerful buyer. They are now focused on acquiring the processing equipment for value addition. Well, we are beginning with stage one of bulking, but bulking cannot give us enough money. We want to enter into processing, and processing needs a lot of capital, and we need a lot of machinery. And uh, that's why I'm saying we need at least to be supported, to be given some machinery, because now we are looking at about four or five crops here. This project is being implemented by the Development Initiative for Northern Uganda with the support from European Union. Because at a time when the crops get ready, given the fact that we produce using rain-fed agriculture, they get ready at the same time and the prices are, low, are down. So if you can hold a bit, then you are able to sell at a better price. Kapilabiong district has so far garnered 120 million shillings worth a produce store. Joseph Oko, UBC. Thank you so much, Joseph Oko. We'll take a short break and we'll be back with sports news.
Are you a player in the tourism sector with a struggling business following the COVID pandemic? UDB, in partnership with European Union, is providing financial assistance to businesses operating in the tourism sector. You can access subsidized loan with grants, loan with a turnover of up to five years, free business advisory services, and free environmental impact assessment. Visit www.udbl.co.ug slash call for applications to apply. Deadline for submission is 31st October 2022 at 5 p.m. For more information, please call 0414-355-509. Get connected today with the My Airtel 4G smartphone and enjoy free data for one whole year worth 86,500 Uganda shillings. That's free 2GB for the first month and free 1GB for the next 11 months at only 250,000 Uganda shillings with free data for one whole year worth 86,500 shillings, making the effective price of the 4G phone 163,500 shillings only. Airtel, the smartphone network. Still watching UBC News tonight. Now, Sasakawa Africa Association has intensified measures, both value addition vegetable growing to smallholder farmers in Ajumani district. This follows a recent survey by Sasakawa and farmers showing that Ajumani is a basket to home and commercial vegetable growing. According to technical coordinator, Sensitive Agriculture, Sasakawa Africa Association, Jacqueline Namsalis, as she says that solar gyre technology will increase vegetation productivity, production, and market and transform livelihood hoods on farmers. Smallholder farmers in Ajumani district are undergoing training in post-harvest handling techniques and practices on vegetable growing. According to nutrition expert Esther Yekwalunga, the technologies are best at preserving nutrient vegetables and fruits for home and export markets. After the rain season, when it has rained, they have plenty. They will harvest all these tomatoes, the dodo and everything, and dry the excess. Then keep it safely for later in the year, when now it is too dry to access vegetables, and they can still eat a balanced diet, because we tell people, eat a colorful meal. Introducing taco coolers, it doesn't use electricity, but it can be uh, utilized by the different farmer groups. Uh, we are trying to put them in central places so that farmers can utilize them to preserve their um, produce before they sell them off. Technical Coordinator Sensitive Agriculture, Sasakawa Africa Association, Jacqueline Namsalis, says they have domesticated the communities with the technologies locally. We do trainings of trainers and uh, the participants mostly are these extension agents and the district coordinators and the agricultural officers. So when we skill them, we know that by involving such people who are on ground, the practice will continue uh, being adopted. Farmers embrace the technologies saying they are affordable, available and best for poverty eradication. We are very, very proud of Sasakawa for bringing us this technology. We are very much interested in it. This, it has really given us that joy. It has given us picture that uh, in the future we are going to do best thing. When it is in our village, it will be better for us to dry okra. Meanwhile, you will be drying your green vegetable safely. We are going to improve our, our living. The solar dryer is a small structure made of local material like timber and its dryer relies on green energy as it uses solar or wind. These technologies diminish risk of decay, make process of drying faster and protect the substance from food contamination. Sharon Chomdisha and Abraham Boita. In our sports stories, Busoga Best Bull FC has in March this season stand big Uganda Cup winners after our classing Vipers SC by 3-1, a game played at the King George Stadium in Masindi. Now Bull FC took uh, tools the early initiative through Karim Dugwa, who later added a second, but after Simon Peter had doubled, Bull FC's lead for a 2-0 halftime lead. 
Halid Rwaliwa, a squad of consolation for Vipers that was dismal on the day in a game watched by a relatively sizable crowd. Bull FC that dominated the individual award, awards with players like Emmanuel Kaliowa and Karim Dugwa getting gongs will represent Uganda in next season's CAF Confederation Cup. <laughs> Now, when it comes to the friendly match that NTV and NB and uh, UBC uh, had today, well, NTV won 3-2, but that doesn't mean that UBC has given up because we can always have a rematch or something happening. Thank you so much for watching. We'll give you more of those details later in our 10 p.m. bulletin and more news. My name is Sharon Chomdesha. Have a good night. I'm Justin Shabasit and Samba from Uganda National Meteorological Authority. Thanks for tuning in to UBC for the weather update. Most parts of the country today had sunny conditions both in the morning and also in the afternoon. Though some areas had showers, for example, central part of Uganda, the Renzori region, that is the, in the afternoon. But then in the morning hours, we had in the shores of Lake Victoria. And it's because of the local effect to the surrounding. According to the satellite image of Africa, we see that there is a high pressure center that is over the tip of South Africa. It has led to the shifting northwards of the rain belt, leaving our country with dry conditions. Tomorrow we are still expecting sunny conditions to prevail in most parts of Uganda, apart from some few areas like in Lake Victoria, where we are expecting showers. Later in the afternoon we are expecting still showers to prevail around the central part of the country, Lake Victoria, but then other parts of Uganda we are expecting sunny intervals. Temperatures try to 30 degrees Celsius, that is in the northern eastern part of the country. Western Uganda, for example, in Kasisa, we are expecting temperatures trace to 32 in Kabale 24 central part of Uganda 29 and areas around Lake Victoria we expecting them to rise to 28 degrees Celsius going beyond Uganda for example in Mombasa we expecting showers with temperatures rising to 29 degrees Celsius in Dubai and London we expecting sunny conditions and then in London Temperatures expected to rise to 21 degrees Celsius. Sunny intervals expected in Paris and New York. Thanks for tuning in to UBC for more information about weather. Don't hesitate to dial star 255, star 85 hash for more information about weather. Have a blessed week.